Good morning, um, I'm Judy Fleming, the director of Hallelu Diet Canada, and here we are at our new location in um, Toronto on O'Connor Drive. And today we're going to talk about the perfect pickler, and we're going to actually use the perfect pickler in making some really wonderful fermented foods. So what do you need to do this? Well, you need one of our little packages, the perfect pickler, and it comes with all these things, it comes with the lid, um, and all the little parts and the sea salt. It actually has some of the sea salt in it for you. And you need some wide mouth mason jars with the, the larger lids. So the wide mouth. And we've got two sizes here because you don't always want a lot of what you're doing, but sometimes you do. Um, I have two perfect picklers set up so that we can make two batches of things. And today we've got some little, um, little Chinese cucumbers which make really great little um, pickles. We've got some carrots, and I've already grated up my cabbage. So we're going to do some perfect pickling. And one of the things it talks about is that it gives you probiotic, high enzymes, fermenting, um, and it's, it's very good for us and, and packed full of all kinds of wonderful nutrients. The little booklet that it comes with, I do suggest that you look through the whole book and, and get an idea of what you're doing before you get started and it tells you exactly how to put the whole thing together. Um, and the first thing you need to do is make your brine. So we took four cups of distilled water. You want to make sure your water is purified water of some type. Um, so we did four cups of distilled water and it suggests that you let it sit for a while so it settles, so it's not um, just newly distilled. So we made the distilled water, left it overnight, and then I added this morning two tablespoons of our coarse sea salt and stirred it up and let it dissolve. And this is the light gray sea salt. And you'll see that because the water does change slightly in color. So don't feel that you've done something wrong. That's how it's supposed to be. So this is a very salty taste. So this is our brine. So we're going to take our, our little jar to start and we're going to do some carrots. And we're going to, we, I cut them into carrots, um, fingers or whatever you want to call these. And you can lay the jar on its side and lay them all in sideways or just put them in as they, as they go. You want to make sure that you fill the jar up. So you don't want a lot of extra air space in here. And you're going to experiment um, and try different things. And this is the first time we've done carrots, so I decided just to do a few because we really don't know exactly what this is going to taste like. And that's good. You want to try new and different things all the time. And we're going to use some fennel uh, to add a little bit of extra flavor to these carrots. Fennel seeds. So we've got that in there and we need to use the different parts. Well, let's see what all the different parts are called. Okay, so we've got our little um, float for the overflow cup. Okay, and we're going to somehow get that into there. We have our ring, the plastic ring that comes with the uh, little kit, the, the, the lid that has a hole in it, and then we've got this here, which is our fermentation lock, and this allows the gas and the air to get out and the, the water to bubble up and to do the fermenting. So you're going to see that that's going to, uh, it's going to be stuck here in the center, and it will fill with water as you're um, time goes by. Now, this isn't something you do in one day. This is a three to four day process. It takes a few minutes to get it together and then we're going to put it in the cupboard um, away from the light, away from hot or cold, and we're going to let it sit. And I'll show you exactly how we're going to do that in a few minutes. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to get this little cup in there. So you're going to have to wiggle things around and then we're going to Okay, so that's going, to, that's going to go in there quite nicely because we want to get the whole thing closed. So we're going to now fill this up with water. Not the cup, the jar. Okay, we're going to fill this up with water. Well, this is actually our brine. Okay, and then you seal it up tight. So we've got all of our fennel in there and our carrots, and then we're going to shove this little 
fermentation thing into the lid. And then I like to sit the, the jar in a glass bowl because it does overflow and you might have a puddle in your cupboard. You don't want a puddle. So. Okay, so let me just read you the instructions very quickly so you'll understand that if you follow these instructions exactly, you'll get really good results. Uh, we made the brine, we left it sitting for a while, and then we filled the clean, wide mouth jar with our, with our produce. And you want to make sure you buy organic produce and, and that it's good, fresh produce as well. And then we filled the jar with the brine, um, then we placed the jar in a bowl, and we floated the little cup, our little cup in there. Okay, so it will, you want to make sure that it, it, it's not, you want to make sure that it can move, okay? So you don't want to have too much in there. You might have to add a little bit or take a little bit away like we did. Um, then we put the gasket on, put the lid on, tight, tight, and then we put this fermentation um, part into the lid, just enough so that it's standing upright. And now we're going to fill this to the max mark, and you can see there's a max mark about halfway up. We're going to fill this with water. Okay, as you're filling it, you're going to have to wiggle it around to get the water down into it. But it does eventually go down in there. And I find that just putting it aside and letting it do it on its own works better than filling it, okay? So we've got that one ready. We'll put the little lid on that's got holes in so it can breathe but keeps the dust out in just a moment. Now in the other jar, we're going to put our pickles in, and we're going to make these pickles um, just plain. We're not going to add anything to them because we really like the flavor of them um, plain. But you can, uh, they sort of make like a dill pickle, but we're not going to add dill to this one. We're, you could add garlic if you wanted to, some fresh garlic cloves would be an, um, an interesting addition. But this time we're just going to try it with just plain cucumbers. And as I said, I use the little Chinese cucumbers because they're, they're uh, a nice size. But you can use any cucumber and make sure it's organic. So you want to pack everything in there. Remember, we have to leave a little bit of room for the cup at the top. So we have our, another one of our cups. Fit in there quite nicely. Actually, we'll put those in after. So we're going to fill it up with brine. I get another bowl here. Make sure that it sits firmly inside the bowl. The bowl's big enough so it doesn't wobble as well. We're going to put our cup in there. Pretty good, just the way it is. I find that if you put the little ring, rubber ring in there, and then put the lid on, it's a little bit better. Just a touch more of the brine. Take another one of our little Locks. Remember, you shove this in, but you don't want to put it in too tightly. But you want, don't want it popping out either. And then we're going to take our water and add that again. Okay, so now we're going to do our cabbage and make a, a sort of a sauerkraut, a fermented cabbage. And with this one, we're going to use a large jar again. And uh, we have our brine. And I use my food processor to do the grating of the cabbage because you need a whole cabbage pretty well. And you're going to need some of the uh, solid pieces just to put at the top at the end. Make sure when you do your, your grating, um, and if you use a food processor, it, it's got a wonderful um, grating blade. But you have to remember to not to put in your grinding blade at the same time because you don't want it ground up really fine, you just want to grate it. So we're going to take this cabbage 
and we're going to shove it into our jar and we're going to pack it down. So you're going to put your cabbage in here and, and uh, if you've got a tamper from your plunger from your um, juicer, it's a good thing to use. You want to get it really packed well into the jar. And uh, again, we're just using cabbage. You can have some ground up um, carrots or um, peppers. Uh, you can do a combination of all kinds of vegetables. It works quite nicely, but we're just doing plain cabbage because that's what we like here at uh, How You Diet Canada. Um, we've done this a few times now. And this is a really great addition to many different recipes. And the little booklet gives you some recipes as well, some different ideas. So we're just packing it in so that there's not big air gaps in here. Okay, so you've, you've got, this was a small cabbage, so you can see one cabbage pretty well makes one large jar and maybe one small jar, so. Okay. We've got it full, and we're going to, the little cup will be just fine where it is. There's two different ways you can do it, and I like this way the easiest. I think it makes a really easy fermented cabbage or sauerkraut. So there's two different recipes in your little booklet. So we've got our little cup of fermenting lot. Cup in there. Put our ring on. Close that up tight. Got in our bowl. Got our perfect pickler fermenting lock in. So we've got our water in here, and you'll notice on the other two, if Jessica comes in on them, they've both equaled off. Well, the ones equal, the ones will in a minute, so that uh, it does eventually will um, go down into the. I sort of tapped it to get it to go down. Oops. Okay, that will do the same thing. Put a bit on. Okay, so we have our sauerkraut, our carrots, our pickles, well, they will be pickles. And uh, it's as easy as that. Now what are we going to do? Well, we're going to put them in the cupboard. We're going to put them someplace, maybe not a cupboard if you don't have a cupboard, but someplace where they're away from the sunlight, they're away from the cold. Um, you can uh, uh, cover them with a cloth if you need to, just so that the, the everyday light is not going to affect them. And uh, leave them for one, two, three, to the fourth day. And then, you might want to look at it every once in a while, you'll see that it's bubbled up and sometimes a little bit will overflow, and that's all right too. But uh, the fourth day, you're gonna be able to bring them, take this all off, and put your locked um, mason jar lid on, and then put them in the fridge. And the food will keep for a number of weeks in your fridge um, until you open it up, and then you need to use it up probably within about a month after you um, open it. So check out the uh, end of the um, video and there'll be um, some recipes there for you. And remember that the little book that they give you with the package does have some suggestions and other recipes as well. And you're going to have some fun making some really good um, fermented foods. Okay, we're back here in the kitchens of Howie Acres Canada, the now Howie Diet Canada. And it's uh, four days later and we have finished our um, fermented foods and we have our carrots and we have our pickles and we have our sauerkraut and everything tastes absolutely fabulous. Such a simple thing to do, you can then use them in other salads, in sandwiches, in, in uh, pita pockets. Um, the pickles are great just to munch on whenever you want to. Uh, the carrots are a fabulous um, that you can chop up and put in other salads or just eat them the way they are. Fabulous way to preserve your foods and they'll stay in these containers in my fridge now with the proper lids on for, for weeks. Um, so it's something you can do with all the extra stuff we have in the fall. So have a great fall and check the recipes out at the end of the uh, 
uh, email so you'll see how we use some of these foods.